I did America's Got Talent, the biggest reality show in the world, a year ago, and I didn't get paid anything. You did America's Got Talent? As my Keith character. I was pranking the judges. I, the producers had me come on, and I was my Keith character, and they didn't know I was in character. That was, like, the whole bit. But I didn't get paid because it's a game show. That's how these shows can get away with it. But every single contestant is cast. Everyone who makes it to air is brought on because like the producers know. Would. They find yeah. out performers who can do a thing. They get you on. They don't pay you because you're technically competing for a million dollars. Dude. So what? no one gets paid. A Search a Keith AGT. That's it up top. I did two episodes. Uh, my name is Keith Apicary. I'm 35 years old and I'm from Winsocket, Rhode Island. Ever since I played my, my first Game Boy Advance game, SP modified nice. screen. And... Do you ever feel like there's like an I actually to this? broke that light at that I feel moment. I have something different to show. Is there a part of you that's like frustrated at the thought of introducing yourself to this broad audience strictly as a character? No, I like being a character. Yeah. I'd rather them see the character. Streaming on Twitch, I'm just kind of myself like right now. Of but course, when I do yeah. a thing like this, I'd rather be doing something like a character that people believe is real. And then when they find out, they're like, wait a second. That Hold guy, the fuck. everybody thought this was real that didn't know about it. A lot of people who watch it were like, that's just Keith Apicary. That The mainstream audience didn't know. It is great. Yeah. I'm very cartoony as this character, mm. so it's like a fine line to walk because I don't want to like come across as like cheesy. It's easier to be larger than life. I do have a lisp and I kind of accent it in this, but I'll go on the conventions in real life and people think I'm actually that guy. Yeah, I think this is how a lot of people came to know you to begin with, right? Yeah. Blow it and waste it. So I brought food for everyone to eat. All the contestants they cut with so much material. That's up. Here is a fake moment. This whole thing, me walking out. They had me go out early to make it like up the awkwardness. They told me to go. They go, okay, go. And then yeah. they said, oh no, come back, come back. To make it like, I messed up. I was thinking, if they just told me to be awkward. Yeah, like, they're like, trying to manufacture because they don't trust they're your ability there. Yeah. But like, that's what I do. I could have tripped over a curtain. I could have knocked some gear over. I and like, had a spill, like an actual better funny bit. Yeah. Than just like walking out, turning around, coming back. Because they were touching their hair up. Like no they're one laughed very... from that. No. So I... why do it? Part of what's most discouraging about being an actor or performer at all is that it doesn't matter how good of a bit you give or how well you execute your lines. You have no uh -huh. control over the exactly. finished product. If you aren't a part of the editing process. Yeah. My, my name's Keith Apicary. What do you do for a living? Oh, uh, well, I'm nothing. <laughs> so how old are you? Uh, 35. Keith's a few years <laughs> on the dot. Yeah. Uh, January 1st? No, March 3rd, 1986. What are you going to do I here tonight? To, I wish I said on the dot again uh, right then. For you guys. <laughs> Dancing. Yeah. The stage is yours. But I'm not a dancer. That's the thing. I'm not a dancer. You're not a dancer. I just like to dance. Good, good. He's part of my routine. <laughs> just You're blowing dance. it. There was like a thing going on there where the guy kept trying to take it. Like yeah. he couldn't. So I just kind of went with it a little bit. I'm surprised they kept that in, but I guess they wanted the awkwardness. This is a uh, Fusk, F U S Q, awesome musician. He makes a lot of chiptune music. I had to throw in no bones at first. The routine was much longer than this. They edited it down because it was a bit too long, you know? <laughs> and I'm not a dancer, as you can see. It's like, kind of like, I do some moves a little too fast, the rap went up fast, the transitions are off. Yeah, but you're so physically capable. It's impressive even if, like, you find some rhythms off. And this, the floor is so grippy, my knees wouldn't slide the way I wanted. I do this for like 60 seconds normally, it's like slow. Hey man, Sofia Vergara screamed for you. That's a triumph. I messed up a move there. I was like, what's the next move? I couldn't remember. So it was a little clunky. And then I didn't tell them I was gonna fall off the stage. I don't think you the guy would've let me do it. Yeah. So I just did it. And then I waited for a second and then did that. See that camera? That's what forgiveness I had to go. I had to flip over that camera down there. That's yeah, fun, yeah. man. Yeah, that was cool. And then they had me come back a second time and it was a disaster because that's when they overproduced and they ruined the whole bit. And I wanted to do just another dancing routine. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, like that's yeah. it. I wanted an all black with a spotlight on me, doing a really like, a much better dance routine, and I'd end with a backflip. And they were like, oh, we kinda wanna have more pizzazz. And they wanted me to change my outfit, they wanted me to wear shiny, glittery stuff. I was like, I can't. Keith would only wear his clothes that he gets from CVS. Keith buys his clothes at CVS for $10. So you defended the integrity of the character to these people who are kind of like dangling enormous opportunity over your I could, Yeah, I couldn't do it though. I was like, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be the character, it would be stupid. And the reason people like that episode, that has like what, 15 million 
million views. Yeah. That was their most viewed thing like that year. They were using it on Jimmy Fallon. They were using it in the trailers. They were using the My Dance for everything. Yeah. And it did well because it was a fish out of water. It was unexpected. So if he's wearing flashy gear, he's sold out now. He's not the same guy from a small town. So I was like, I can't change Keith but we can put this, make the set bigger and better. And that's what we went with. I compromised with them. I said, okay, we'll do the big set. And I wanted to knock over big set pieces and like, oh no, he's breaking more stuff. But it was just too much going on. And it was like, people didn't really get to focus on the dancing. Cause it was like a dance, run around, break something, dance. It was so confusing. The audience didn't get it. And then they wanted to have a ton of confetti, balloons, all this stuff. I was running around the stage. The cameras couldn't find me. The cameras were getting blocked. It was just bad. It was just a mess. I didn't get moved on. It's rigged anyways, I'll say it right now. Oh, of course. It's yeah. like, I was never moving on. Mm -hmm. The whole voting in thing, there was a whole time conflict where people were watching the episode on the East Coast an hour or so later than it is actually broadcast to the West Coast. Mm. So when people were calling in to vote, They've already missed it. Yeah. And I remember saying to my priest, I was like, well, how are the East Coast going to vote in? And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. They figure it out. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. It's it's not live. Yeah, they don't They're care. not seeing this at all. So their vote isn't counting. Oh, and one thing that told me I wasn't going to move on, my producer, the guy that worked with me, yeah. he worked with another guy who's a magician. Before we went out that night, he goes, oh, hey, let's take a picture. I want to take a picture with both of you guys. And I was like, oh, weird he's taking a picture with me and not these other contestants before we go out. Yeah. Because he wasn't going to see us again because he knew we were going home. And he was going to be working with the rest of the night with the rest of the yeah, producers. Yeah, there's no miracle. What do you know? Me and the magician got voted off. Interesting. And the, the girl he didn't take a picture with moved on. She went to the final. Hmm. So I was like, all right, I know I'm not moving on. I knew it from the beginning. I like, guess yeah. it's just so rare. But rigged. you already know that there's like no meritocracy to it as well. No. Like it's entirely it's about It's not a ratings, true game right? show. And it's, the audience has no say. What's funny to me about that is to what extent do you feel as if you benefited from this experience? Like professionally. I almost don't think I benefited at all. Basically, I have a clip that has 15 million views that, that I can you be like, oh, no I did that. But know? then people are like, oh, why did you audition for America's Got Talent? I'm like, I didn't. Yeah. Because I have no interest in that I was asked to come on and it took a year of my life I had to do so many Skype meetings with them I had to talk to them a million times about things I had to send them a hundred dance videos I didn't have the space to do these dance routines at the time where I was living I had to go to a field and film these clips and send them to them it was a super annoying process and I didn't get paid one dollar and I was doing it for literally nine months but also they, they wouldn't let me put my YouTube channel in the description of that video I was like can I please put Keith Abigail I made a new Keith YouTube channel at the time I was playing a lot of Minecraft as Keith and they wouldn't let me do it. They're like, no, we can't do that. And then the guy that does social media was a fan of mine. So he was always linking me on Instagram and stuff and tagging me. But YouTube, they couldn't get my URL there. But I will say, to actually answer your question, how I benefited, I just realized it as we were talking. Corey Graves is a WWE commentator. He's like a character himself. He was a wrestler, but he does commentary now. He's very well known. Him and his wife, Carmella, who's a wrestler, became fans of mine because they watch AGT. And I'm a fan of theirs. And he, because he saw me on Keith, as Keith Abercary, he followed me and we became friends. And then I was able to get Corey Graves on a dad song called Obliterate, one of my newer songs from last year. So that's how I benefited. I met Corey Graves because of AGT and I'll take that. It's a win. <laughs>